Back to U of L, where the interim athletic director Josh Hurd is talking about the negotiated settlement with Chris Mack. I don't know about you guys, but seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money to me. And and on the flip side, you, you can sit here and say it's zero, uh, but it's not zero either, right? Uh, who, who knows how long that's going to go as far as the NCAA case? And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to bet on the NCAA wrapping up anything quickly. And uh, so uh, that's why we came to terms that we did. Josh, who will hire the new coach and what, what kind of, how do you even get that process started with so many interim people at the university at this point? So obviously trying to get through uh, today and then worried about, uh, the guy, like I said, the guys in the locker room. And so I think it's worth noting that, that Mike Pugis is uh, going to serve in the interim role. I think a lot of, poop, a lot of people just presume that. Uh, because he did that earlier this season, but uh, did have that conversation uh, with Mike yesterday evening. Uh, he looks forward to the challenge and uh, veering off course a little bit relative to your question. I, as I was talking to uh, the team today, uh, the question, the one question I had for them is uh, what were their goals at the beginning of the season? And one of those was obviously to win an ACC championship. And uh, we, still half of, we still have half of an ACC schedule remaining. And so I would contend that those goals are still in front of them. And so uh, that's, that's going to be their focus, obviously, with Mike as their leader. As far as moving forward, uh, it's my intention to hire the next head coach. Uh, I, somebody could change that on me uh, as far as uh, naming a, a permanent AD and it not being me. Uh, but right now, uh, I, I, I intend to uh, obviously consult university leadership and, and plan to make that hire. As a follow-up, do you anticipate changing the terms of Mike Pegues' contract at all since he's taking on kind yes. of a new role? To follow up on that, do you have a timetable for making a move? And obviously recruiting is a big deal. You're, the, you're like, obviously probably like have a permanent coach in place for the next regular season. And what was your conversation like with the players? What was the mood in that room when you uh, talked to them about where this program was going from today forward? Uh, as far as timeline, uh, I, I would tell you we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up when we find the right coach. And um, I would expect that we will try to do that uh, quickly, efficiently, uh, because to your point, it's extremely important that uh, the guys in that locker room, this community, uh, know who the leader of this men's basketball program is. As far as uh, the tenor of, of that meeting, uh, look, it, it, it was sad, right? You had a guy who uh, gave his heart and soul to this place for four years. And uh, he had built some real relationships with those guys. And obviously his staff uh, felt, felt the weight of that as well. I felt the weight of that. And I feel the weight of it talking about it right now. Um, it's difficult to talk about uh, because you think about just the, the time, energy, effort that a head coach uh, who coaches a program at this level that they put into this uh, and, and for him uh, to say he's no, go, no longer going to do that, yeah, it's, it's sad and it's disappointing. Josh, you mentioned the, uh, that, you, you know, the, the, that the NCAA process is not necessarily fast. Given that and, and the, the, the uh, interim nature of the leadership here, how do you view the job that you're selling, the job that you have to offer to a candidate? One of the best in the country, uh, unequivocally. Uh, um, you know, it's one of the reasons uh, I came back here because of all the uh, uh, all the opportunity that this athletic department, the, the, excuse me, this athletic department affords, and uh, I've had the opportunity to have uh, I've had one conversation with one head coach to this point, and, and not asking if he was interested in the job, uh, just as a as a friend, and flat out asked him, uh, as an outsider who hasn't spent much time in this community, what are your thoughts on the on the University of Louisville head coaching job? He said unequivocally top ten in the country. Not even close. And uh, so I think that we'll get some of the best, uh, most highly qualified candidates in the country. Josh, right here. Uh, going off of that, what is the top trait or characteristic or a couple that you're looking for in, in a candidate for this job? I think it's, it's everything that makes a good head coach, right? And that's not just, uh, that's not just X's and O's. And I would tell you, uh, this job is difficult, right? There's a lot of pressure uh, in that position, and there's a lot of things that you have to navigate internally, externally, and so it's got to be somebody that uh, 
uh, has a vision uh, to compete at the highest level, at the elite level. Uh, I think everybody understands that the expectation here is to win national championships. That's not going to change. Uh, I think it's somebody that has to be able to communicate to fans, uh, to stakeholders, uh, donors, uh, to folks on campus here, to folks inside the community. And uh, so that's going to be very critical. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, somebody who just comes in and embraces this town. Uh, I, I am, I'm a huge believer that you have to embrace the community that you're part of. And if you can do that, you can really start to fit in and, and really, um, quite frankly, be, be successful. Josh, to, uh, to clarify, the, the conversation picked up speed after the Notre Dame game? Uh, let me make sure I get my dates, my dates correct here. So um, I, I don't know if they, they picked up, right? It, it, nothing intensified here. It was, uh, like I said, we, 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 I stay in communication with uh, uh, obviously our head coaches as, as well as their representatives. And so going back uh, last week, had a conversation and then moving forward through, uh, actually through the beginning of this, this week. And quick follow up, with, was there any consideration, obviously there's gonna be a lot of attention on the program, Duke is coming to town this weekend and, and, and making this move now when the program is, is going to be on No, I, I don't think future games played into it. Played into this at all. Uh, it was really a matter of timing as far as coming off of that game Monday night, uh, providing really an open week uh, to discuss some things and make some decisions. Two-part question about NCAA. Uh, how do you see the timetable of the IARP decision affecting candidates and their the uncertainty that goes with that? And second part. Does a history of NCAA violations eliminate candidates for this job? So as far as timeline, uh, obviously, I, I don't know how it's going to play out. Um, you know, you're starting to see the IARP cases uh, come, to, come to a conclusion. And so uh, not exactly sure what that time like, timeline looks like. And they've given us an idea, but I can't comment on that right now. Uh, and then as far as uh, ask your second, second part, sorry, Tim. Would a history of NCAA violations eliminate a candidate, given your history of NCAA issues? I would tell you that uh, I am going to want a coach that has the highest level of integrity possible. Is the buyout going to be paid all at once or spread out over time? It's spread out between this, the end of this fiscal year or the remainder of this fiscal year and then three future fiscal years. Like Josh, what if former players told you about what they want to see from the program going forward? I think they want to they want to see, they want to feel, uh, or have the opportunity to really have a connection to this program. And, and let's be honest, uh, they want to they want to compete for championships. You know, that's what a number of them did. Uh, they won uh, or competed for national championships, and so that's what they want to see. It's a really proud group. Uh, you know, obviously, there's a lot of them I haven't been around. There's a lot of them that I'm getting to know, and I have been around. And their expectation is the same as mine, and that's to compete at an elite, at an elite level.